See, this is why Mikel Arteta, Arsenal fans, and everyone else through this period need to hold their nerve. Drawing 2-2 at home against Spurs might on the surface feel like a disaster. You watch some of the fan cams, you watch some of the reactions, people are already piling in on Arsenal. Why? Because they wait for results like this. Why? Because Arsenal actually have gotten... Well, they've gotten away with a couple of results early on this season. And whilst there have been a lot of good moments where they have shown resilience, where they have shown progress, people have also been picking on those moments where Arsenal haven't looked the way they did last season. And people want to compare, contrast, and try and draw a negative conclusion for Mikel Arteta, but also, therefore, this Arsenal team. And I want to try and... I'm not going to sugarcoat this for Arsenal fans, but at the same time, I'm not going to try and pile in because I just think it's dumb. And I also think it's obviously just there for the clicks. There is something big to acknowledge in this fixture. And I think early on, it's only respectful to this team to acknowledge this man and what he is evoking around Spurs, which is not similar to Mikel Arteta. But there are people who are making comparisons. They're different personalities. They're completely different kinds of... Um, they're completely different kinds of uh, inspirers. These two guys are brilliant managers. Mikel Arteta is a genius, and Ange Postecoglou is one of those guys that you feel has an X factor. That's something that's so different, and I'll get onto this in a second, to what the other Arsenal uh, competitors have. But let's not get it twisted here. This game was close. Both of the expected goals, Arsenal edged the expected goals, but Spurs also did a pretty good job of getting the ball into dangerous areas, and actually were a lot more cohesive in terms of a team trying to score a goal. They also dominated the possession, which is something that's quite unusual for Arsenal, but also not something that's unheard of. Mikel Arteta was playing a smart game here, and he, I think uh, actually when a lot of people are kind of insulting Arteta, trying to have a bit of a jibe at him, trying to find holes in some of his tactical um, decisions, I think what we should also congratulate here is that Mikel Arteta played a very high pressure game very early on in the season, probably where you don't want to play Ange Postacoglu and Spurs, and came through at least with a point, if not closer to a win. Both of them were pretty equal in terms of shots, and both of them were also pretty equal in terms of the defensive actions to try to stop those shots. It was a well-contested game. It was clearly a game of high nerves, which is why you saw someone like Romero obviously having a couple of brain whatevers you want to call them. And then these two moments were big changes at halftime. Jorginho and Kai Havertz coming on, Declan Rice and Fabio Vieira going off. Two halftime substitutions are a big decision for a manager. And I don't necessarily think he got those wrong in the sense that he was wrong to make those changes, but in the balance of the game, it, it had a big influence because Postacoglu and Spurs were trying to pin Arsenal. Not even trying to pin, they were just trying to do exactly what Arsenal didn't want. Now, Here's the difference between Arsenal this year and Arsenal last year. Arsenal this year have an actual competitor in Spurs. Last season, whilst we thought they had that, and really they should have had that, Spurs were a bit of a dumpster fire in terms of what it was that they were trying to achieve. City this season have Manchester United. A comparable dumpster fire. Liverpool have Everton. A comparable dumpster fire. And everyone, of course, is in competition with Newcastle United. If you look at the direct translations of you know, the derby for all these sides, Spurs by far, at least at this point in the season, are the hardest of those three teams to play. And I just want to kind of acknowledge that because I think it's, it's just going to be one of those things where people go, oh, you know, Arsenal should, they've always historically beaten Spurs, blah, blah, blah. Even Ange Postacoglu himself says, most of the players weren't here when they were doing that. I wasn't here when they were doing that. This is not the same Spurs that we knew from even a couple of months ago at this point. So, you know, I'm not saying that Arsenal shouldn't have won this game. I think that there were a couple of guilt-edged chances and a couple of moments that they should have made more of. But when you look at the way that the two sides stepped out, especially when you're looking at the injuries that have changed a lot of the decisions for Mikel Arteta, the load management, the frequency of the games, but also just some of the like tactical decisions that you make when you're kind of starting with a front three of Bakaya Saka, Eddie Nketiah and Gabriel Jesus backed up by a midfield with Fabio Vieira in it who's really coming into his own but at the same time is there enough of a foothold in that against this Spurs side with Basuma and Saar? Possibly not. Like Madison was dropping deep. You saw the influence of someone like Kulusevski. You saw how good Pedro Poro or even Adogi could, were in this game and even Van de Ven, Van de Ven, Van de Ven were in this game. You, they stepped up in terms of Spurs pressure. This was pressure versus pressure. Arsenal were trying to pressure Spurs, but it also meant that Spurs had a press that they could just 
try their best to get them, and they arguably played very well through. And you can see that acting out here. Like, one of Arsenal's big weaknesses, even from last season, and something that I was kind of reticent to go back to, but I do think needs to be addressed, is the fact that when they were playing teams like Everton last year, one of the first things that you saw Sean Dyche and Everton set up with was this wide set of players here. This was Arsenal's average position in the first half. Of course, they're the attacking side uh, in terms of going downwards in this, right? But you can see here, like, Saka is so much deeper because he's trying to get the ball cut inside. I think Odegaard was really graceful. I, feel, I felt that Declan Rice gave them a good foothold in the game. There were times where I felt that Fabio Vieira actually could have been a bit more expansive, probably was being pegged back by, that's right, the influence on this side of the field here. You've got Saar and you've got Basuma just sitting there guarding that back line. Of course, there was a lot more space over here. And of course, Arsenal were trying to get in behind that with Gabriel Jesus and Nketiah. You see that then in the second half playing out quite differently. And here's what I want to talk about. Arsenal, of course, even more trying to get beyond that side. Kind of what you want to get in beyond there would be like a Martinelli, would be like someone who's, you know, there to make a difference. That wasn't really the case. Obviously, Martinelli wasn't in the squad in the first place. You would have liked to see someone who could go out there and stretch the team a little bit, who could have a bit of influence on really pushing the side out there. And, you know, bringing on an Nelson or someone like that would be great. Bringing on uh, Emil Smith-Rowe is fantastic. I don't think, you know, Smith-Rowe is a bad player. If you brought Martinelli on, I feel like you just, you can pin them back and make a real difference. Spurs were in a bit of a comfort zone, to be honest. This was them in the second half. Look how expansive they are. Look how, how able they are to play into the space, despite the fact that Madison went off. And despite the fact that they're bringing on a player who's obviously, historically, a lot more aggressive, a lot more in this in going into the tackle a lot, a lot more defensive if anything gave them a bit of a foothold in this area like i get that uh, arsenal fans are going to be frustrated but uh, spurs won that midfield battle they won that battle in the back line and in previous games it's not like they haven't shown this expansiveness right these are formations that are very expansive arsenal knew what our spurs were going to come and try and do they knew what they were going to try and achieve and i'm not really sure they set up to try to cancel that out but that's where i say this is so key to that this kind of this change, where Rice went off clearly because of an injury and Fabio Vieira came uh, off because, I mean, clearly they wanted to change things out with Kai Havertz, was a bit of an issue. And I think it shows that, you know, despite Arsenal having spent a lot of money this summer, which I think is obviously a, a big factor, bringing Kai Havertz in, bringing in Rice, bringing in Timber, Timber was going to be such a big part of how this side moved forward. They've obviously also got some quite big uh, injuries at the moment, which would have probably changed this game for me. Yuri and Timber, Thomas Partey, two players you could have brought on to give them more of a foothold in the game. Probably one of those would have been in one of those two positions that went off. It's not as if I'm like, you know, I know in previous weeks I've said Arsenal are trying to move him on from Partey. I know they're trying to bring Timber in. Timber's not, obviously not going to be possible to bring in this season, but you get my point. Like, these are all guys who could have influenced the game massively. And... It's not to do with the lack of depth. I don't think Arsenal that have depth. I think there's plenty of attacking nous in there. I just think Jorginho probably isn't that one player that you want to bring in. He's more of a backup. You would hope that Rice would last a game. And that's also why Rice was brought in. He played a lot for West Ham before. Like, he had enough minutes on the pitch to be able to, you know, just be a constant presence for Arsenal. Like I'm going for. Now, that's not to say that Reese Nelson and Emile Smith Rowe, who, you know, Emile Smith Rowe came on late, so I can't really criticize him, but you don't really want to be throwing him on late. You'd rather bring a Martinelli on because you can get in behind. Both teams realize you can get in behind. Like, this is a very expansive formation. If there's any way you can get in behind, it's here and here, mainly because Zinchenko is pushing on, as is Ben White. And you can also get in here and here, mainly because the two fullbacks pushing on either Odogi or on the other side as well. So it's not as if Poro and Odogi are ungettable. It's not as if, you know, Van der Ven obviously had, uh, I thought he was probably the most consistent performer today, but actually, you know, Christian Romero didn't have a terrible game outside of those two aspects, the two goals that he gave away. What I'm saying is Arsenal are trying to rebuild at the moment. They're trying to change things up. They're trying to transition forward and Spurs tried to exploit that today I get it like you, the, I think there was a weird uh, level of like criticism for Saka that people saying he was, you know apart from the goal contributions he wasn't all that involved that's because it was difficult for them to get the ball to him because obviously they've got some people who are going to be fairly aggressive as soon as he gets on the ball because you know I get it like maybe you could have supported him a little bit more from the Odegaard perspective but Odegaard had so much to do because of the link up they needed to have they essentially had a front four it was really a 3-3-4 rather than a front three, right? 
And when you then look at the way that they then change things, obviously they emphasize the opposite side. So switching things over, putting Kai Havertz, trying overloads on that side, trying to get joy against that side of the pitch, which is essentially the Pedro Porra side of the pitch, didn't really pay off. And really it allowed Spurs to get more back into the game. I love Kulusevski in this game. I really enjoy it. I think Son was fantastic in this match. But I also think that when you look at the decisions that Ange Postecoglou made, it was to try to cancel out a lot of what Arsenal were doing. And he said that in the pre-match. He said, we are here to try to make uh, impose ourselves on the game and, and not allow Arteta to make those small tactical changes, but he has to make bigger tactical changes. Sadly, some of those big, big tactical changes were decided for him. That doesn't make him a poor tactical manager. But what it does show you is, especially if you look at where City sit in the table and where Arsenal sit in the table, it does show that Arsenal have gone through some difficult games so far and City have actually had relatively low challenges, right? They've been relatively stress-free so far. Arsenal, of course, have had little stress, but should have come through those games a little easier. What I'm, I'm going to make the case for now is that the end of September through October is a time for Arsenal to shape their season. They've got some big games coming up. They've got the Carabao Cup. That's followed by Bournemouth. That's followed by Lens. These should all be games that, that gives those players who are out time to recover, that gives those players who are uh, struggling or at least transitioning into the side at the moment a little bit more time to find some space, find where their role is. Then they play City, then they play Chelsea, then they play Sevilla. Like there's two just big games in there that can shape their season. That's October for you, right? And the fact that there is an international break in there as well means that Arsenal should be putting everything in before going away to City. And they should, uh, sorry, before going home to City and then going away to Chelsea. The final thing I really want to talk about here is the, the choice of uh, front line, because I've been talking about this for a little while. We saw that Arsenal were upgrading in the summer in the defence. Urien Timber came in. He would have been, he's a great uh, piece. They miss Tomiyasu consistently and they miss Timber now consistently. Or at least they miss the piece of Timber. I would have loved to see him the piece of Timber. But you get my point. That, I think, changes how Arsenal move forward. Timber is so versatile. He's able to slip into a number of positions. Tomiyasu is so strong, so progressive. They miss him in a number of positions. I felt Ben White had a pretty, and I don't want to say poor game, but he didn't have a great game today. And I think it actually opened up a lot of space in that back line, but that was also what Spurs were trying to do. So let's not blame him for that. On the other side of that, there was one kind of glaring piece that they needed. And I thought that Kai Havertz was going to approach some of that. I thought that Kai Havertz was going to address it, right? But instead, Kai Havertz is really hanging out in these transitional areas. Let me just stop presenting for a second so that I can do this for you, right? He's hanging out more here than maybe here, right? And that is because of the personnel that Arsenal have. Now, arguably, he's there to empower other people. In Nelson, uh, in Ketia, Jesus, Jesus, whoever it is, Odegaard, arguably, and then Emil Smith-Rowe. But later on in the game, when you really need a, game, a goal, could you go, and uh, you know, I know he's gonna transition more into these areas, these average positions. Could you get him more in this type of an area could you get him more in this type of an area? Maybe that's the reason you bring Smith Rowe on in to attack in these areas to come in and make a big difference. If he's around here though, Arsenal are much more likely to get a goal, but I don't feel like they gave him, they've given him that role yet. I'm not saying they don't trust him. I'm not saying that they don't want him to get into those areas. But I do feel like I felt that was the play that they were going to go for, a play where you could play him as a false nine. And they haven't really deployed him in that position yet. Maybe because Eddie Nketiah is in the side, and maybe because Gabriel Jesus is playing from that kind of left side coming in. i just love to see him combine with those guys a little bit more. Like Maybe if they had, maybe that's the issue here. If they had Declan Rice in this area, this, like, this red zone here, if they'd had Declan Rice there, which... Arguably, they did in the first half here. They had two guys who were just sitting there and really playing against that two and enabling the rest of the side. You can do that. They couldn't do that today. So I feel like a lot of the game plan, a lot of the issues that they were encountering came from the fact that A, Ange Postacoglu was trying to cancel them out, which he did very well. And then B, the substitutes I imagine they wanted to make weren't the same as where they would have made them if they could. It's not criticism of Arteta. It's just that the game hasn't played out how they want. And you can't always expect it to. Of course, people are going to try and cancel you out. But you get my point, right? 
What I'm really saying here is one thing. Arsenal need to ride this period and kind of um, find a way to get through what is going on at the moment in terms of injuries, in terms of the uh, maybe lack of structure in that midfield area. And I get it. Like That must be really frustrating to hear. To an extent, when you go three steps forward, you have to go two back. And this is that two back that I think Arsenal are currently witnessing, where it's kind of like, hey, like, there is progress going on, there, that we have to acknowledge that. In moving on certain parts of the midfield, change is always going to happen. I don't always know if change is progress, but you kind of get my point. I think it is, in Arteta's mind, this is progress, right? So with that, what you have to do is consolidate until you get to those, that City game, and then go into that City game with you know, the, the best that you can, right? That period, this period is where Arsenal need to just keep the pace. Getting a point is better than a loss. But at this point in the Premier League season, especially with City setting this pace, it feels like a loss. City haven't really been challenged so far this season, so I wouldn't really worry about that. But this consolidation period, this time where maybe Rice will be out, maybe there'll be a bit of transition in the midfield area, Arsenal need to find a way to get through that period. They need to almost go back to the basics that Arteta has set. Now, that's not saying that, you know, you go back to B1 or C1 or whatever it was from last season. It's just that the, the whole point of what Arteta is doing right now is to set A1, A2, A3, A4, right? This could be A3. This could be A4 at this point that Arteta is at. But the point is that the fundamentals that he's laying down need to be adhered to. Saying at this point, it's this one guy, it's this individual that is not going to help anyone within the fan base, isn't going to help anyone within the team. And I know the expectation is high. The expectation was there to beat Ange Postacoglu, all these kind of things. That, I think at this point, I'm just begging Arsenal fans, don't self-combust. Don't turn in on yourselves. Don't say we need to get X out of the team. At this point, I think we're really going to see, a, like it, I kind of said this was coming there, you know, the crunch point in the season. We're going to see a lot of what Arteta's creativity in terms of tactics, in terms of the fundamentals of what he's putting into this side actually are. Because we're not going to just see a1, A2. We're now getting to A3, A5, A6. Some of the smart things he's done, I think, will get you back into games. But there were individual errors which let Spurs into this one, and vice versa. Don't lose the faith, is what I'm saying at this point. Don't, don't just go, oh, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, well, we just need to go back to what we were doing last season. You can't do that without Xhaka. You can't do that without Partey and the team. There has to be almost a commitment to the new Arteta way. And I feel like that is coming. The great thing is you have three games to try to get that together. And that, that's so key. On top of that, uh, I saw a few people have made this point now, and I've been making this point for a long time. I made this point when, uh, weirdly, Chelsea were going to sign Blahovic, Lukaku went somewhere else. Uh, there are a number of big guys coming in. Liverpool have got Cody Hatpo, Nunez. Obviously, City have got, um, City have got uh, Haaland. Uh, it's Newcastle have got... I Isak and a couple of other guys who you could count as bigger guys. Even Tonali is kind of a big guy. You could count a lot of these people bringing in bigger people. Obviously, uh, you know, maybe Spurs went the other way and getting rid of Harry Kane. But you get what I'm saying here. Like, they're kind of the adaptable finishing piece that I felt Arsenal needed was a big guy that they could play off today. And Kai Havertz hasn't really been that. And Ketia arguably hasn't, hasn't been that in the way that maybe a Vlahovic or a Lukaku or someone big could be like that. They attract a lot of attention. They're difficult to play against. Where would you go with that? That's kind of what I'm saying here. So I'm interested to see what your Arsenal fans think of this. It's not a criticism of Arsenal. I think they're moving forward. I think there'll be a lot of people out there at the moment going, they slipped up. They messed up. This was a big opportunity missed. Like all these kind of things. This, was, this is the best Spurs team we've seen in a number of years now. And Arsenal should be should be worried about playing Spurs again because this was the home game. I think there's some issue, like I kind of want to talk about injuries this season, but I feel like it's another video. And I kind of want to talk about the fact that, uh, I don't, like at the moment people are talking about Raya and, um, and Ramsdale a lot. I, I feel like Ramsdale was a good choice for this game. I feel like Ramsdale, uh, Raya also was a good choice for this game. Raya made some really good saves. Uh, does Ramsdale save either of those opportunities? No, not really. So does it make that much difference? No, not really. I think Raya was going to push them down the field. Ramsdale was probably going to do the same. Like, you can see where we're going with this, with this Arsenal team right now. I just want to know from Arsenal fans where you think this ends up, what the end goal is. Do you, how far, how close to the North Star do you think this Arsenal team are? I'd love to know. 
Let me know in the comments below and I'll chat to you guys in a little while. Mashallah. Bye.